This was a scene inside Seattle City Hall moments ago. Hundreds of peaceful protesters took over the building along with City Council member Kashama Sawant. They marched down from Capitol Hill after a rally led by Sawant on the 12th night of protests against racial injustice and police brutality. Kamos Jonathan Cho starts our live team coverage with the protesters who just left City Hall. Jonathan, where are they now? Uh, well, they're back here at the East Precinct. What an evening of twists and turns. Hundreds of protesters are still here, but earlier this evening, in a bold move orchestrated by Council Member Shama Sawant, more than a thousand protesters entered City Hall. Who's City Hall? Now, she opened the doors and has been marching with them all night. Authorities say they were caught off guard and had no idea. And because it was peaceful, there was no need to respond. Now, demonstrators spent more than an hour talking about defunding the Seattle Police Department, banning chemical weapon use by police, and taxing Amazon. Sawant even said she wants to turn the now boarded up East Precinct into a community center. The evening started at Cal Anderson Park with a gathering by some estimates of more than 2,000 people. Several, including Sawant, passionately shared about why they were continuing to march and the work that still needs to be done. Again, going into City Hall was an impromptu move, catching even marchers off guard. They are here back at the East Precinct. For now, we are staying with them. That is the very latest. Live from Seattle, Jonathan Cho, Como News. And we just got a statement from Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin's office on tonight's calls for her resignation. It says Mayor Durkin will not be distracted from the critical work that needs to be done at the moment that Seattle is facing its most challenging time in history. It goes on to say the city has so much healing work to do that is where Mayor Durkin will continue to spend her focus in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. A woman is sharing her harrowing experience after she's seen on video getting hit with a flashbang at a protest on Capitol Hill. Couple's Tammy Mutasa live tonight in Seattle where she spoke with a woman who's recovering from her injuries tonight. Tammy? Yeah, Preston, Aubrey Inda just got home from the hospital today. You know, she's been protesting all week and volunteering, handing out food and water, and she says she is still shaken up after she got hit with that flashbang. I got shot in the chest with one of the flash grenades. When Aubriana Inda relives the violence playing out in this video, the trauma comes right back. I think I'm a lot more terrified right now. You see her in the video standing on the front lines of a protest on Capitol Hill that escalated with police Sunday night. She says a flashbang explodes on her, hitting her chest. She collapses on the ground. It's pretty traumatizing. The next day that I was out of the hospital, um, my friend would barely make a sound and I felt like it was the flash grenades going off in my face. You see protesters and volunteer medics who rush to help her. They carry her away for several blocks with a makeshift stretcher as more flashbangs explode around them. The 26-year-old says a friend finally got her to an emergency room. Today, she's still in a lot of pain. I had a tube down my throat. To, I wasn't breathing. My pulse stopped a few times in the hospital. Aubriana is denouncing the chaos that's erupted outside the East Precinct and says the police reaction has been excessive. I really hope that this shows that police brutality is a thing and that we are peaceful protesters and we are trying to make things change. She went back to Capitol Hill to thank the volunteers who came to her rescue, reflecting on what the doctor told her. I was lucky enough to have those medics pumping my heart because he said that I could have died otherwise. Beginning tomorrow, the city council will be asking the mayor's office to open up the financial records of SBD for a deep dive in what one council member called a big black square. And I am committed to defunding the police, to using most of that money, 50%, ideally, to invest back into communities that we failed. But what would cutting the police budget in half really mean? Council members had few answers. We don't necessarily know what it means to dismantle a police department. Last night, the crowd in front of the East Precinct got on Socialist Council Member Shama Sawant for agreeing to a 50% cut and not a total defunding. I did not make up the demand of 50% defunding the police. That came from the community. She said a total dismantling won't happen with capitalism. Any politician, whether in Minneapolis or in Seattle, who is telling you that the police force can be dismantled under capitalism is you. Yeah.
Many council members say half of the police budget should go to housing and social services, addressing what they say are the causes of social injustice rather than police response. The chief said both are needed. We do need to have an organized trained response for that, for those issues. That doesn't mean we don't care about people who are homeless, mentally ill, addicted. There needs to be funding there too. She says she will follow the decisions of the council and the mayor. You know, ultimately we expect electeds to be, to take care of public safety and public health. And, and that's the request. Clearly what council members don't want is the militarization of the police. What Teresa Mosqueda, the chair of the powerful budget committee and other council members saw for themselves at the front line. And they need to stop with these tactics. They need to take it down. They need to push back their line. And we are respectfully asking them to do that. This shopping trip has been months in the making for Chef Joseph Gearman. I've been waiting for some new shoes. These ones are falling apart and uh, yeah, we just need some new ones now. Under phase two, retail businesses allowed to operate at 30% capacity. Here at New Balance, that means only seven customers in the store at a time. COVID-19 has also forced many businesses to change their approach to customer service. Instead of us, you know, actually helping the customer put their shoe on, which you know, this is a full line store. That's what we're used to doing. Um, we just open the shoe up for the customer and hand it to them. Today, only about 40 of the 160 retail and restaurants here at Alderwood reopened. We expect a lot more in the next week. And then, of course, in the coming weeks, we should be at a full complement here rather shortly. In the meantime, the mall has added signs throughout reminding customers to shop with space. Hand sanitizer stations have also been added and markers have been placed on the floor for shoppers who must wait outside businesses. I feel okay, I'm okay. As long as we take the precautions, I think it's about time. And others do too. Many here just happy to get a glimpse into what our lives used to feel like. I'm just hoping that everyone can find some way to be happy and get back to living our normal daily lives.